gentlemen, and welcome back to the Solo King. My name is Reed Rapid Melton, and I do want to welcome you back to the Korean 1v1 tournament. If you are a little, are a little bit new to the stream, then welcome, of course, uh, here on Azubu TV. Now we're getting into our third best of three of the night. In case you guys missed our first two best of threes, well, I'm not going to go ahead and spoil them right now. We're just going to go ahead and get into Shy versus Tucson. Now, Incredible Miracle have had a few struggles this season in the regular season of champions, but CJ Entis leading the field, tied for the longest time, right up at the top of the pack, of course, everyone underneath the legends that are the GE Tigers. But for right now, Shy represents not only a very strong team, but also a very strong performance so far in the Solo King. If you missed his games versus, uh, I believe he was facing Che and Score, Definitely make sure to go back and check those out. Uh, Shy split an arrow 2-1 victory over Che from Jin Air Green Wings, but ultimately Chain was forced to ride the side plane back home as Shy advanced to take a 2-0 victory over KT's score as well. Tucson made it with a 2-0 victory over XD, which was actually not a matchup I thought he was going to win. I, I gave that matchup to XD, and, well, Tucson proved me wrong. But uh, he also picked up a very, very strong 2v1 victory over Duke. And when you're beating Duke in a 1v1, like, that's, that's where Duke shines. He's had an incredible season overall, and has really helped Najin in a lot of, uh, really, really shore up that top lane. But here, we have Tucson facing off against Shy, and as far as their matches so far in the Solo King are concerned, uh, it's a much more Tucson favored situation. His victories have come on not only five different champions in five different games, but he also favors a little bit more of a hybrid passive and aggressive style with Teleport and Ignite picked up, whereas for Scott, for Shy rather, his five games, he's played three on Kale and two on Kennen with a flash teleport style being picked up. And you can kind of see the discrepancy not only between the teams that these players are on, but between the players themselves. As Tucson versus Shy, 23% versus 77% for Shy. Argue, honestly, it's hard to vote against Shy in these 1v1s. He's had a very consistent champion pool and of course a very consistent win rate as well, dropping only one game so far over the course of this tournament. With a very strong 4-1 victory, you should be seeing a lot of Kale and Kennen out of him. But it is a best of three, so we'll see whether or not they uh, continue to get banned out. Both of these players very, very bloodthirsty, having picked up every single one of their Solo King victories uh, with the first blood. So they've killed their late opponent every single game that they've played, or of course have been killed in that they, uh, they both actually lost one game but let's go ahead and uh, get into our first game of this best of three we'll be coming back up here on your screen in just a second but of course before we get into the game make sure to hit that follow button right down below the stream when you follow the stream it'll let you know whenever we go live with things uh with content like the solo king here on azubu.tv and of course uh, you don't want to miss our matchups coming up after this one it'll be ganked by mom versus faker Coco will be playing off against Ambition and a whole host of other players you don't want to miss. So make sure to stick around. Because when we come back, it'll be Tucson versus Sh versus Shy. I almost said versus Sky. Tucson from Incredible Miracles. Shy from CJ Entis. I'm going to keep doing that for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it's just a nice day. There's not a cloud in the Shy. Damn it, I got it wrong the other way around that time. <laughs> we'll be going into game here in just a second. So stick around. We'll be right back with our third best of three of the day.
Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament, of course broadcast here on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid and we're getting into best of three series between Shy, representing CJ Entis versus Tucson. On Incredible Miracle. Now, uh... Well, the Alulu versus Graves matchup, so both range. Neither one of them, uh, you know, champions like Caitlyn or Lucian or those big early lane bullies. But we've already seen one loss for Lulu so far, and uh, honestly, if this laughter keeps up, I'm kind of hoping for a second one. At least it's not Lux. Thank you, Observers, for switching to a different view of the map. Gonna watch in Tucson. He's gonna be passive back in base, looking for a little bit of extra gold. Pick up an extra health potion before going back into lane. Might go for a mana potion, but uh, Graves not actually all that mana intensive. Maybe you want to spam out the buckshot, but it should just be another uh, another health potion coming out here from Tucson uh, as he walks into lane after a small delay. Shy already in lane uh, with his Doran's ring and uh, total biscuit of rejuvenation start. I was just gonna say rejuvenative biscuit. I went through actually a few names before it was finally ironed out, but. The biscuit of the rejuvenating of the the health and the man, I, uh, it's too complicated. We're just going to stick with biscuits, which is now not only making me hungry, but also really, really wanting Shy to kind of prove us right as far as Lulu is concerned. Uh, kind of skeptical about the Lulu play ever since we saw it at the very beginning of Champions. But coming in here, we'll see how it does versus Tucson. Now, traditionally, AD carries are very, very solid picks for 1v1s. Uh, specifically, when you play that teleport uh, flask style kind of AFK farm for the first, like, five or six minutes of the game without actually trying to go super aggressive. You have the sustain in lane that you need to maybe go back to base and pick up a big buy. We've uh, actually seen a Brutalizer Graves before. Not often that you see, like, second or third tier items be picked up and... Actually, I think we've seen a Morella Namicon picked up before as well, but... Oh, there's the level 2 power spike for Tucson. Shield being skilled there by Shy. Blocks a little bit of that damage coming his way, but he will still be zoned off that creep wave. Won't deny him level 2, though. Tucson, great lane mechanics. Of course, uh, in a 1v1, you don't have to worry about being ganked. There are observers in the game. But, uh, of course, they will not be leaving their fountains to come and uh, help out either one of these players. Tucson with some very, very methodical trading here. Uh, you notice the, uh, the quick draw used not only to dodge away from Glitterlands, but also uh, to get that extra attack speed, help him shove this wave even more quickly. Continue to maintain this level advantage that he's pretty much had from level 1. Got level 2 and level 3 first. And Actually putting down turret damage now. Uh, turret damage, very, very questionable, especially in the early game, because you're never really going to have an, the opportunity to capitalize on it. It's uh, it's like if you're playing uh, certain card games and you just hit the other guy in the face over and over again very, very early on. You tend to kind of run out of steam. But they're able to get a little bit of value off that. Now, help picks on Shy does help keep him a little bit healthier in the game, but... Houston just continuing to shove this wave in over and over again. Really just utilizing uh, the, the fact that his moves don't actually take quite as much mana. Maybe he uses a buckshot on the wave, but it's primarily just auto-attacking. Shy both forced to use mana to both aggressively clear the wave and defensively put those help picks on himself. And Tucson never really buckshotting for damage on Shy unless he can get two out of three of those buckshot particles off. So he's at least getting a little bit of bonus damage off of hitting those onto Shy. Now between these two players, if you had to ask which one of them would advance, if you just go straight off of stats, then you'd give Shy the advantage. And of course, we already saw the uh, the Inven poll. Over 70% of people voting for Shy, and honestly, it's going to be impressive to watch. Now, one uh, one notable thing as far as this matchup is concerned today is that Shy has only played two champions so far in the Solo King tournament. 
And he's actually never played Lulu before, uh, at least in uh, in this tournament. Now, uh, for Tucson, he too is playing a champion that he hasn't debuted yet in this 1v1 tournament. But specifically, in the matchup versus Shy, like we said, the ability to kill minion waves and push incredibly quickly without using mana is something that well, maybe Shy will have a few problems with. Instead of buying extra HP from a health potion, a lot of mana potion. Of course, he's only specced into that total list of rejuvenation so that he can get some mana back there as well, recognizing it as a somewhat limited resource, specifically in matchups versus AD carries like Tucson is playing right here. A great job CSing by Tucson. He's uh, he's picked up 45 CS here at the six minute mark. Not perfect, but uh, about that 10 CS mark ahead of Shy that he'll need to maintain in order to win the game at 100 CS. And well, we're already almost halfway there, and we're only six minutes in. Of course, uh, about one and a half of those minutes actually come with no minions in the game, so maybe uh, maybe gonna have to throw out a few of those stats, but. Either way, back to the matter at hand. But uh, pushing intensifies here, just buckshotting the wave at every moment. And uh, this uh, this lane matchup actually kind of takes me back to I believe it was the MLG Summer Arena, one of the first times that Azubu Blaze uh, really debuted their um, well, really debuted themselves on the world stage, coming over to North America and playing some of the best North American teams. Uh, the Graves Lulu lane was a lane that Blaze came up with to shove the lane as quickly as you possibly could, take very, very fast turrets, and uh, just really kind of ahead of its time as far as the metagame was concerned. But here you can see the uh, the champions in lane versus one another, not in the same lane. And once again, it's all about that wave clear. But specifically in this matchup, Tucson with a pretty sizable lead Starting to grow his lead to about 15 CS here at the 7.5 minute mark. Of course, also putting damage down onto that turret little by little. Slow and steady wins the race. Tucson, uh, it's very methodical the way that he's playing right here. He's not afraid to go in for aggressive trades. Whoa! Forces that wild growth out of Shy. He's... Not going to have that when he needs it. Specifically, Tucson came up with a collateral damage to it. Level 6. He's still got that online as well as Ignite. So, when Tucson goes in, he's going to go in hard. That Ignite collateral damage combo could just be what win him this game. And while he won't win it when Lulu is high enough in HP and has that health picks and manages to put it up again. As long as he stays in lane, he is getting... One CS after single CS closer. Just winning off of that CS victory condition. We actually talked about earlier how both of these players very, very bloodthirsty over their uh, their previous games. First blood picked up in every single one of their wins as their win condition. But as far as this game is concerned, a quick trip back to base will mean that Shy comes back to lane. With enough Doran Spring to fund a small country somewhere. He's uh, got a ring for every single one of the fingers on his hand. Oh. But theoretically, I'm not actually sure how many fingers Lulu has. You'd guess five, but she's a Fae Sorceress. So we'll uh, see if we can get some confirmation on that. You know, I've never actually checked before. The bewildering, mis bewildering mysteries of League of Legends. All that and more tonight on the Solo King. Well, probably not, actually, to be fair. Now, Tucson finally going to get a very well-deserved trip back to base, but when he comes back in the lane, he might actually be losing quite a few CS. He'll be forced to stay on the fountain to sustain, not in health, but actually in mana, which is somewhat interesting to watch. But what's going to be even more exciting to watch will be five Doran's Blades, Versus five Doran's rings. I haven't actually seen this combo before, or at least in a very, very long time. And honestly, for Tucson, he might have been better off selling the Crystalline Flask because it, well, gives overall worse stats than just picking up straight up consumables. But of course, it's better in the long run, and you get more value out of it the more times you go back to base. It's good in 1v1s because you're getting value because. 
you're tr you're drinking it, but for uh. For the 1v1, when it comes up to just having straight up more sustain in lane, potions are definitely the way to go, specifically when they're biscuits. Shy, a big fan of the biscuits, has picked himself up several in his inventory. Whoa, there is giant growth again. Tuesday going in with maximum burst potential. Hits most of it, but look at Shy. He is actually sustaining through that very, very well. Creep Wave is on Tucson's side, so he'll start aggroing in there. Couple more auto attacks, and Shy going very, very low under turret. Tucson! Wins the lane, not off of aggression, but just off of that CS. 100 versus 82. I was actually kind of confused there for a second. I was like, why is he going so aggressive? He's going to dive him under turret. Oh, no. And then I realized that, you know, 100 CS is also a win condition. Maybe a little bit less exciting than watching, you know, two second first bloods as soon as the game starts. But at the same time, very important to players' kits to be able to win via the long, slow, passive game, and a fairly dominant victory at that. A 20 CS lead at the end, uh, or thereabouts. So to take a little bit of a breather here, uh, before we get into game number two, as far as analysis of what needs to happen, Lulu not necessarily having such a hot day today in the Solo King. A uh, champion that started out very well in Champions. Coco putting up some big numbers on her, kind of the uh, the hallmark game this season of Lulu, but mainly just because we haven't seen too much of Lulu this season uh, in uh, at least competitive 5v5 settings. Uh, traditionally, maybe more in the support role than mid, but not a champion that you traditionally see. Let's go ahead and get into game number two. We're into picks and bans between Tucson and Shy. Now we're gonna see a Kale band against Shy almost every game this series, or at least this split. And it's gonna be exciting to see what else comes out there in the ban list. Last ban for Tucson should be a Kennen. And there it is, coming down on your screen. But what do you ban against the 80 carry that has it all? Uh, Kay the uh, Caitlyn, no brainer there. A gangplank ban and okay gangplank I'm not saying it was a random ban but it is actually the first to ban in uh, in at least the round of 12 so far and of course uh, something that I believe Monte Cristo pointed out on Twitter earlier is that gangplank Garen and I believe it's Galio represent the first three champions in uh, Korean solo queue. So when you're when you queue up for a game of solo queue and you have all the champions unlocked, the first three that you see are uh, all G's. So Shy kind of saying, "Look, you know, come at me. I'm not gonna ban another AD carry. I'm just gonna pick it." He grabs a Varus versus Lucian matchup. Now, initially, when you just look up at the champion to champion head to head, Tucson's Lucian. There's not too many things wrong with that, including their incredible adept That's of uh, making that somewhat alliterative. But now we're looking for the second champion to be locked in. I thought it was going to be a Varus. I was getting my hopes up. I was making my predictions. I have an entire page of Varus notes right here, but just kidding. It's actually a Jace. Jace notes much more simple. Walk in and kill the guy. Or alternatively, let your turret get pushed in by minions while you're zoned off of it, which has happened so far this tournament. However, I haven't actually seen all that much Jace play as far as, you know, in the 1v1s. But it will, of course, be interesting. 30 seconds left before these uh, players finally lock in their picks. And actually, I believe the picks are actually locked in. So before we actually go ahead and get started in this game now, Keep in mind, Tucson versus Shy is uh, a matchup that was very, very heavily favored as far as the fan vote was concerned. In Shy's favor, but Tucson grabbing game number one. Just goes to show that anything is possible. This is where I sing like the uh, True to Your Heart song. Bust out some 98 degrees. I don't know, something about that generation just applies so well to League of Legends, but unfortunately uh, we've decided to move on with you know, newer and better 
songs and games. So I guess I can't complain too much about that. Uh, and game number two should be on your screen here in just a second. But before we actually get a chance to watch game number two, I do want to encourage you to hit that follow button right down below the stream. Make sure to check out Extra Life, our Extra Life charity, and support that if at all possible by scrolling down below the screen. Of course, you can see that Extra Life charity button right up there off to the side. And stick around because when we come back, it'll be a quick look at how these players got here in the Solo King. Stick around. We'll be right back. クロルピル치는거맞치근잘거같아요오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오오
big tanky super tanks and as fun as that is to watch it's maybe not quite as uh not quite as exciting as watching everybody just run in there and kill everybody. So, uh, a little bit of a loss here for Shy. Did not wait back in base for the extra health potion. Just walked back in lane so he could get the extra shove in. And shoving versus Illusion is very, very important. If the Illusion gets level 2 ahead of schedule, you're in for a lot of pain. Uh, specifically because he's probably going to have his minions still alive and be... Uh, because he's, uh, well, he just straight up wins 1v1s. So that's kind of the reason you pick Lucian as an AD carry. And while sure, he's been nerfed just a little bit as far as his early game stats are concerned. It's going to be still interesting to see if he can close this one out. Or, of course, uh, you know, for Shy, I, I feel like you have a kind of a rough road ahead of you. You have all of this, like, fan pressure going on. I'm, uh, I'm sure Shy, you know, might have tabbed over to Inven at one point or another and seen, whoa, wait a second. Got all these people who hashtag big fans want me to win, and oh, that Light Slinger passive might have just sealed the deal here. Shy down to about 200 HP, continues to take up. All of these light slingers, light bringers, lights all over everything. Oh, Tuesday stuttered an auto attack. And of course, the, probably the bigger difference between both of these players is that Tuesday doesn't actually have flash. Just relying on that relentless pursuit to cover the distance. And in some ways, in the 1v1, that's not actually all that bad. Uh, because it means that you actually have a combat effective summoner spell as opposed to flash which you have to actually get value out of based on positioning which is not necessarily an overt spell or stat that you actually automatically get stats out of Gonna left alone and won't be able to stand toe to toe versus a barrier up to He's gonna walk forward and force that flash out of Shy. Very, very aggressive positioning there by Shy. Doesn't really pay off in Tucson. He's got kill potential here if he plays this lane correctly. Level advantage, but oh, hits Shy with the piercing light through the minion wave. Shock blast. That's gonna miss. And with the sustain advantage there, Tucson will be able to uh, stay in lane. Yes, this wave and come out very far ahead in that trade. Yeah. Recalling back to base now, Tucson is probably the first player that we've seen. I think, yeah, definitely the first player that we've seen so far actually pick up a second tier item. Going for that Vampiric Scepter. He's come back into lane, and while he will have the sustain, we'll be behind a Doran's Blade. So, we'll see that combat stat effectiveness is what winds up costing him here in this lane. Now, going with a Vamp Scepter means that he should be able to sustain in lane, but I, I'm not sure that it necessarily sustain is going to be what wins you this matchup. He's healing about 20 HP every single time he auto attacks, and when he combine that Vampire Acceptor Lifesteal with those three Doran's Blades that actually turns out to be quite a lot. Avoids that Shock Blast coming his way and oh man, look at that micro. If Nara Kyle was watching, he'd be pretty proud of Shy, but he's actually not doing all that well in this 1v1 matchup because every time Shy fights Tucson and nobody dies, that actually means that Shy comes out a little bit behind because of Tucson's greater sustain. And while maybe there's a little bit more just combat stat effectiveness from four Dwarian's Blades, oh, this is going to be it. There is the acceleration gate, the shock blast, the auto attack's coming down. It's shy. Game number two, it'll pick up a win here versus Tucson. Let's go ahead and get a quick instant replay and watch exactly how this transpires. Shy's got the uh, got the angle behind the minions, hits that shock, blaze, shock blast right through the acceleration gate. One auto attack, and there is the thundering blow dropping the hammer on a Tucson, giving Shy the game two victory. Tying up the series, of course, Shy in a tie, not a situation that he is a stranger to. Did drop one game earlier on in the group stages, but that'll be a game two victory, and that sends us to a game three blind pick.
Shy versus Tucson, it's going the distance. And it's not the first game tonight that has done so. So it's going to be really exciting to see whether or not... We see just a straight up 80 carry versus 80 carry. Because when he comes to the blind pick, there's actually no way to stop Shy from playing one of the two main champions that he's actually used this tournament. Kale and Kennen have been his go-to pick so far. We'll see if he decides to bring those out here. In game number three, I mean, it's coming down to the wire. Game three, it's blind pick. There are no bans. There are still rules, but none of them prohibit Shy from picking Kale or Kennen. I'm thinking we're going to see a Kale pick. Uh, it was what he used the most over the course of this tournament. He had three wins on Kale, or three games played on Kale. I suppose I should uh, specify that. And people kept letting him pick it. When he couldn't get uh, Kale, he went with Kennen. And uh, as far as Tucson's concerned, his champion diversity is overall much greater. He has played a different champion in every single game of the Solo King. He's played Nunu Vagar. Karma, Zerath, Lee Sin, and of course Lucian in our last uh, our last game. Where Shy's like, hey, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. And just kept going with Kale and Kennen. So let's go ahead and get into our final game of the night. Tuesday versus Shy, game number three. Or at least it should be coming up on your screen here in just a second. It will be blind pick. And I'm really glad that that's a feature this time around uh, in the Solo King. A lot of 1v1 tournaments would just make it either a best of one or a best of three without blind pick, but it gives you the opportunity to pick some crazy champions if you want to go for maybe a little bit of a counter pick. If you can get inside the mind of your opponent, or if you just agree to do a, a least in 1v1, which several players have done so far this tournament. Tucson has opted for a Caitlyn, whereas uh, it's just that same old Jace pick for Shy had the opportunity to go with Kale, but uh, you know Kale's range discrepancy versus a Caitlyn probably wouldn't necessarily be all that great, and specifically because there are no bans for blind pick, that warrants a very different style uh, than uh, than you'd see normally. When you can ban out champions like Caitlyn, a champion that Shy has been very consistent in banning over the course of his group stage matches. That's going to be the way that, that the final ban phase, or pick phase goes. There is no final ban phase. What are you talking about? Alright, so let's just take a look at the runes and masteries. Uh, for Tucson, uh, looks like he's going with flat AD percent uh, attack speed, if I'm not mistaken. And as far as masteries are concerned, 2190 points into everything that matters except for the last or the um, the dangerous game. One point put into that dangerous game mastery by Tucson that doesn't do anything. If you use dangerous game, that's because you've gotten a kill or an assist. Well, newsflash, if you get a kill or assist, you've already won the 1v1. So I'm still a little bit unsure as to why he's picked that up. Also, of course, it's the... Um, Observer is pointing out, I uh, picked up a point in bonus attack speed when you land a critical strike, but unfortunately critical strike runes are not allowed in the Solo King just due to the RNG effects. Straight up 15 AD, so a much higher AD perspective, and you'll notice for Shy, he has actually both taken points out of the crit chance, or not the crit chance, the attack speed off of crits, and there's no dangerous game mastery for Shy picked up, and that has allowed him to pick up some extra sustain, some cooldowns at attack speed, and he's also not gone for the blade weaving. Just sticking with that spell weaving, uh, not wanting to put another point into there. Now, he has put three points into Warlord, and that Warlord mastery is a little bit questionable sometimes, because it gives you 5% attack damage when you have three points in it. And honestly, you're never really going to feasibly have above like 150 AD uh, in the early game centric lane phase style that uh, the Solo King has. So 5% of that is not all that much. It's not really going to warrant avoiding putting something in, uh, putting points into things like that blade weaving that Shy left to point out of. But honestly, much better masteries. He neglected a couple of the masteries that are kind of traps, at least in the 1v1 setting. You can really tell that Shy has put a lot of uh, a lot of focus, a lot of work into his runes and masteries. So let's see if it pays off. It's game number three, blind pick, the last game of this series between Shy and Tucson, and it's just going to be amazing to watch. So don't 
miss it, you do want to stick around for that. And of course, to ensure that you don't miss any more games in the Solo King tournament, make sure to click the follow button right down below the screen. It'll let you know whenever we go live with the Solo King. Make sure to donate to the Extra Life charity down below if you can, and stick around. We're coming back in just a second with game number three. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament broadcast here on Azubu TV. Game number three here versus between Tucson and Shy, and Shy winning the popularity vote by a landslide. But the games themselves have actually been very, very close. Tucson with the game one victory, Shy bringing it back with the same champion he's playing here, Jace. Defender of tomorrow is going to have to defend today versus Tucson on Kalen, one of the strongest 1v1 champions we've seen emerge here in the Solo King. Would love to get some win rate uh, stats on that, but as far as the uh, the win stats go between these two players, on the head-to-head -head, coming into this game, the CS per minute, the time played, the creep score overall, everything in favor of Shy. He's gotten more creeps has played less overall time, so he's won more quickly, and he has a higher CS per minute, so go figure. He's also done it on less champions. And both players have picked up all of their game, all of their group stage wins uh, with first bloods. So no turret kills, no winning with 100 CS, it's just been straight up first bloods. And what a way to go as far as, uh, as, far as 1v1s go it can be a little bit of a uh, of a safety mechanism to say, all right, I always know I can fall back, add my turret, win that CS battle, and win the game that way without actually ever really having to play against the enemy AD carry. You just uh, you just sit in lane, farm things out at long range, and I remember the first time I saw Caitlyn played as a uh, as a one v one champion. It was. Uh... I think it was a couple of years ago at All Stars, and Messiah was actually playing Caitlyn. He actually brought Smite on Caitlyn so that he could kill more minions more quickly, keep the wave shoved up, and actually won with a turret kill victory, I believe, uh, in that matchup, if I'm not mistaken. No Smites here for Tucson, as he is actually going to need that summoner heal to keep himself a little bit more mobile. Now, unfortunately for Tucson, he's actually facing a little bit of a summoner spell counter here. Barrier overall provides you with more defensive stats, just straight up, you know, HP for HP. But for Summoner Heal, you actually get the full benefit of getting all that health just as straight up health. Whereas Barrier, you could you can hold off on the damage, wait for Barrier to come back down, and then go in for damage. The downside of bringing a heal, though, is that it does get cut in half by Ignite, a Summoner spell that Shy has brought with him this time. So I need to use that to cut down that Summoner Heal's effectiveness. Maybe that'll help him win the 1v1. That will inevitably win him the series. And advance him on to the next round of the Solo King. Ooh, Shock Blast. Acceleration gated. Chunks Tucson down to half HP. And now going in through the minion line. That's actually the Summoner Heal already used. Tucson not really respecting this. Does get a nice dodge on that Shock Blast coming in. No Acceleration Gate to really put out that damage. And... With a pilt over Peacemaker and some minion damage. I'll trade that damage right back on off to Shy. Lane kind of resetting. It's actually pushing in Shy's favor at this point. Oh, getting behind the minion line too. Just standing still. Using some of that stop action micro. Sometimes the biggest jukes are the ones that don't happen at all. You stand, move back and forth, back and forth, and you stand perfectly still. And your late opponent, is just, his brain just explodes. Like, oh, I thought you were going to juke. And then he just misses everything. Shy missing that one skill shot. He's actually been pretty good at hitting them. Speaking of pretty good at hitting skill shots, Tucson. I believe he's hit almost every single one of those Piltover Peacemakers. Uh, at least in this game. Oh, oh Shock Blast. Going to land. There's Shy going forward. Uh, did just use that damage on a cannon minion 
I am fairly sure he used at least one of those abilities on a cannon minion. Tucson, uh, pretty happy that cannon minion is there to block a little bit of that damage coming his way. Sustain advantage, though, definitely in Tucson's favor. So far so the that Tucson actually has an extra health potion that he's only just now using, where Shy is completely out of sustain, and we'll have to go back to base before he picks up any more of it. <laughs> Off the recall, back to base, Tucson does get the opportunity to push way far up in the lane, and... Shy only able to come back into lane with a couple of Doran's blades. We'll see what the buy is here for Tucson, uh, as he should be able to afford at least those two Doran's blades. CS was actually fairly comparable, but the big difference should be uh, the health potions. When he comes back into lane, that's four HP potions, which is somewhat redundant because the P and H yep. health point potions. There we go. Uh, Tucson. With four of those and one mana potion after the teleport back in the lane. Oh, nice micro back through the minion wave. Will block a lot of that damage and oh, gets the 90 caliber net backwards to avoid being hit by that thundering blow. Save himself a lot of that damage. A great trade versus Shy. And even with that mana potion or those mana potions rather in his inventory. Sets up for a lot, uh, a lot of sustain. He's going to be in this lane for a while. Does have to worry about the CS game. He is down about two CS, I believe. Exactly, 2CS as the lane resets just a little bit towards Tucson's side of the map. One by one, a very, very close CS game being played here, but we're less than halfway through to our 100 CS goal. And keep in mind, when you hit that 100 CS, you have to be 10 CS above your lane opponent in order to claim victories. So if this keeps being this close, right back and forth, we might see actually a little bit more of a prolonged game. And in fact, there have been a couple of games so far uh, in the Solo King where games have stretched on to like the 15, 16 minute mark just because both players are so close in CS. Because it becomes kind of a razor's edge matchup if you get behind in CS. You'll never catch back up, you're on the back foot, and your best recourse is to kill the guy or risk him out CSing you. Because you know it's going to happen sooner or later. So. For Caitlyn versus Jace, this should be a Caitlyn favored, uh, at least CS matchup. Extra range. A headshot proc gonna make it a little bit easier. And you can see Tucson. Perfect CS there on that wave. Actually coming out ahead in that CS score. Which is, once again, a little bit redundant. CS score. Yeah, I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen. Uh, also interesting to note, the three Caitlyn traps. Those Yordle snap traps. No Yordles, but still the snap traps. Out in front of the turret. Delicious cupcakes there for Shy if he wants them, but gonna have to resist for now. Straight auto attacks, one after another. Minion wave kind of tied up here in the mid lane, but uh, oh, going back in there once again. Perfect 90 caliber net backwards. He's a Tucson. Oh, he actually does miss that CS, so good denial. Underneath turret, but of course, now the 2 CS advantage back in Tucson's favor. Of course, when you're commentating a 2 CS advantage. Probably missing out on some of the other subtle nuances. Um, uh, the observers in uh, in game, Shu and uh, Chuds. Uh, Chuds, a guy named Chudnator. He uh, I spoke to him in between the uh, the break, and he told me that uh, his dream today is that while he's in game to make sure that the game doesn't end too early, uh, his dream is to kill fakers. So if there's a really really close one v one. Kill me, he's gonna teleport mid lane and try to kill Faker after he's won the game, just so that he can tweet and say that he's done that. So, you wanna keep an eye on Faker versus Gank by Mom as that matchup comes up a little bit later on. Ace in the hole there, some free damage. Won't be used to win his mat lane matchup, but when things are balanced here on such a narrow knife's edge, Shock Blast hitting on a Tucson, and really Shy's getting some nice Shock Blast damage out there. But, oh, he's actually recalling back to base. He's got that teleport right back up again. And his teleport comes up a little bit ahead of Tucson. So he'll pick up double Doran's blades. Come back to lane with four of them.
Teleport. Oh, he's going to TP to a minion. He recognizes that they're going to hit the CS cap, so he doesn't have to worry about, uh, you know, getting the reduced teleport cooldown by TPing to a turret. So he's going to do that to a minion. Maybe try to keep himself in this CS game, and uh, we'll get that CS underneath turret. Gets that one, too. And boom goes the dynamite. All four. Under turret, only down one CS. Versus Tucson, who should be looking at... Yeah, coming back into lane with a teleport. He's got Quad Doran's Blades as well. And very, very comparable itemization here. Tucson gonna hit that. Oh, Shock Blast does land. But so does that 90 caliber net. Going back in. There's the hit back towards the turret. And that exchange right there might just be what wins shy of this lane. Although, gotta keep an eye on the CS count as well. Creep score count. That's still redundant. I can't think of another word to put after CS. Trying to figure out one of those. Uh, Shy looking to get through towards that minion wave. We'll get all three of those backline champions. Take a lot of his HP for it. More importantly, he'll push this wave towards the turret. Be able to put on a lot more harass on a Tucson. Or possibly even damage onto that turret. Which could be valuable if this game stretches on long enough. Keeping an eye on uh, CS uh, as well as, okay, there's Ace in the hole. So, uh, champion with an ultimate versus champion, well, kind of without one. It's not like you're ever going to kill anybody with Jace ult. Well, I guess it does ampl amplify your, uh, your skills maybe just a little bit. Or your auto attacks rather to be more more specific so we're starting to get to that 100 cs mark so this is where every single cs matters we're 99 to 97 turrets are starting to go down across the map but that shouldn't actually impact almost anything uh if either one of these players goes back to base they pretty much lose the game off of the creep score difference so now we just have to make sure that every single one of these creeps gets hit and oh shy drops one there He's now down one CS in this matchup. If either player gets a 10 CS advantage over their lane opponent, they win the game. So it doesn't get a whole lot more intense than this. Just trying to play it still a little bit aggressively. Try getting forward, but Tucson not afraid of uh, any of those shock blasts. Uh, Shy will continue to keep that CS coming his way, and he's still one CS down. Can he harass Tucson under turret enough to make that CS differential? Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Directed Camera, for focusing on the Teemo, who hasn't done anything all day but stay in base. Sure, that's pretty important. Maybe we'll get a chance to see Teemo a little bit later on in the tournament. It's a good 1v1 in some situations. Maybe, kind of. Not, not really. I don't think we've seen a Teemo so far this game, uh, this, uh, this tournament. Shock Blast misses. Shy trying to keep these trades up, but actually running pretty low on mana here. Ace in the hole coming out again, and... I wonder if Tucson can reliably win this lane matchup off of just hitting aces in the holes. I guess he would eventually run out of mana for it. There's not a lot of way to avoid that. Okay, a mini shock blast does land. No acceleration gate on that one. Keep an eye on this CS. It's still important, and it's something that Shy is actually starting to slip a little bit on. If he picks up all four of these creeps, then he'll actually be, you know, continuing to be one... CS down, but he can't walk too closely to them. Misses one, misses two! And oh, this could spell the beginning of the end. All we need is a 10 CS advantage here for Tucson, which makes every single one of these creeps actually almost about to win him the game. I want to go on like you know, clever anecdotes to make, you know, humorous Korean references, but all of a sudden the game is going to end and we're going to be like, oh, and the game ended. Somewhat anticlimactic, and I believe this would be the closest CS battle of the day. Out of all the games that have happened so far, it's been Tucson and Shy here in the deciding game number three. It has come the closest. Taking it back to a 1 CS difference, but it's about that sustain. Headshot proc onto Shy. He knows he is getting closer and closer. Losing this matchup. Teleport is about to be off cooldown. But I don't think he can go back to base here. If he backs right now, okay, he might lose a couple minions to turret. Yeah, and he's actually going to avoid going back here. He needs this perfect CS to be able 
to keep himself in the game, but his turret continues to drop lower and lower. CS is gonna get lower and wait a second, there it is. Yeah, the victory for Tucson. All it takes is a second of that CS advantage, and that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles. I actually didn't catch that for a second. I was like, wait, what? There wasn't a CS difference there, but inevitably there was. And so unfortunately, uh, that will be Tucson. It will take out CJ and his shy, turn that boat back around on itself, and win. The deciding game number three of their best of three. He'll advance to the round of six. And I believe he will play the winner of... If I can check the brackets. I believe he faces the winner of Bengi and OQ, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they should show the brackets up here in just a second. But uh, in the meantime... We are heading out to a short break in between sets. But don't go anywhere because when we come back, ganked by mom. Mid laner for Jin Air Green Wings. We try to fly his glad plane right in to Faker's hopes and dreams. Of course, representing SK Telecom Team 1. And that matchup will be coming up next on the Solo King when it does continue. Make sure to hit that follow button right down below the stream. Stick around. Because when we